Hello and welcome to episode 9 of Boxing Science TV. In this episode we'll be catching the highlights from Jordan Gill's recent performance against Rafael Castilla. We'll also be catching up on his reflections from the fight in a post-fight interview. We welcome Belfast-based welterweight Lewis Crocker to the team, where he's started his remote sports science support, which sees him doing testing at Sheffield Armour University, and being given the programmes and the tools to complete his boxing science programme in Belfast. I'll also be sharing some monitoring tools for boxers to help monitor training load and daily wellness. And finally, we'll be talking to one of Boxing Science's longest standing members, Muma Mwemba, as he transitions from the amateur boxing into the professional ranks. Jordan Gill following a six round points victory against uh, Rafael Casillo. How are you feeling Jordan? I feel good. I don't look good but I feel good. Yeah you got a little bit of cut on your eye there yeah. uh, from a head cut. Yeah, he he coming in with his head low I was trying to put some shots in and I, he was coming up quick with his head. It was just mm. a bit dangerous but caught me like three times with a good big head, head touches so yeah. just got to be careful of that. Knocked him down twice. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Third and fifth. Uh, uh, third, third and fifth, I think. Yeah. How do you feel that the fight went? I felt the foot went well. It's really good to get the ground. I think that's what I've been missing. Uh, going the rounds with Bruno and sparring, but sparring is different to fighting. And uh, that's what you need. You need the rounds. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I had a long, long time out, I had 18 months out. And then uh, come back and blast the kid out in two rounds. And then five weeks later, I'm back and I've got a six rounds in. So that's a stamina good step for these, uh, these fights coming up. Yeah, definitely. And you know, it looked like from like first, second round that the kid weren't that durable because they were a bit weird with his style. They were off, we knocked him off balance a few times. And uh, you know, I think that you, you'll learn a lot more from doing the six rounds. Yeah. Than you would have done if you blasted him out yeah. like last time again. One of the toughest men I've ever hit. Actually. Yeah. 
his, like, his balance was all over the place. Uh, I was trying to tie him onto shots, but his timing was very different. Uh, he had a bit of a way about him like Captain Jack Sparrow. He wasn't <laughs> quite there, but he was. Yeah. And, uh, so I was hitting him hard, hitting him clean. And like, a couple of times he was sort of gone, but then he's, he come back. And uh, yeah. I'd take me out to him, it was very tough. Personally, I think the uh, corner should have pulled him out, or the ref should have jumped in. But yeah. I, I can't, can't say anything for them, but if, that was, if I was a coach, I'd take them shots. Yeah. They wouldn't have yeah. The six rounds in the bag. Uh, what do you think's next for you? Got to heal my hands up, my hands are bashed. Uh, got to heal my face. Uh, I'll be back in the gym this week, training hard, and uh, see what comes up. Uh, could possibly get out English title with with some in the day. Uh, could have enough opportunity, so we'll see what happens and uh, keep pushing up. Right, we're here with Ray Ginley and uh, Lewis Crocker. How are you doing, lads? All good. All, all good. So, can you explain, you know, how you came across uh, boxing science and the reason why you're here today? Uh, one of the boxing science, say, students, would you say? Boxers. Uh, boxers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one of the, uh, Jordan Gill came over to spar one of my boxers, Anthony Kikachi, for his British title fight, and I just seen the the programming of Jordan's training, he knew exactly what he had to do. You know, he just had to like go to his phone. He knew the what his session was for the day, what his loads were, and you know, I seen the shape he was in, and I thought, well, this isn't like what we're used to over in Belfast. This is this is you know a different ball game, and I added uh, Danny on his Instagram page, I was following a lot of the stuff that they were doing. And then uh, I just said uh, this would be great for, for Lewis, so yeah. got in touch with yourself, and uh, here we are. Yeah. How do you think uh, the, the programming is going to add to your boxing, Lewis? I think it's going to be very yeah. beneficial. You know, we learned so much just being here for a couple of days. Um, such an advantage over everyone else because this is very few people, it's going to be the stuff that's on this program. Yeah. So I'm just I'm looking forward to seeing the end result. My bloods and stuff too, see yeah. how my, my body works, you know. Um, did the, the, the fitness test and stuff, you know. Um, worked through all different with mobility, you know, uh, explain what muscles do what, you know. Certain muscles need to be activated for other muscles that, that work better and stuff. Just, just everything, 100% uh, knowledge, like, you know, it's, it's going to help me so much. Yeah. So what kind of information have you have you got from, from this way? Are you going to uh, coach Lewis for over the next five weeks? Uh, I, I just I just follow what <laughs> use, use of the yeah. brains I'm just yeah. the, if you want to say the brawn I just do what you tell me to do yeah. uh, one thing that has definitely given me confidence going home is like when you're not I don't have a masters don't have you know PhDs mm. so everything I do is just guesswork that mm. I find in books and online mm. but coming here has removed the guesswork now uh, you have given me the facts, we've done the test, we found out what, what type of an athlete Lewis is, uh, he's a high intensity athlete, so his programming is uh, programmed to suit the kind of athlete he is, so all I have to do is make sure that the program that you have drawn up for him is, is delivered correctly. Yeah. 
And when's your next fight, Lewis? 18th November in Belfast in the car front on the car, so I'm yeah. looking forward to that. Yeah, and what are your, what are your goals for the next uh, 6 to 12 months? Uh, just take it step by step, fight yeah. by fight. And I'm only 20 years of age, so if I'm 10 to 10, get through this program, get stronger, get better, fitter. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, take yeah. step by step. Brilliant. Cheers for your time, guys, and uh, good luck in your, in your training. I hope you enjoy the program. Thanks very much. Uh -huh. Hello everyone, it's Danny Wilson from Boxing Science and today I'm very pleased and privileged to be presenting to you for the Combat Conditioning Online Conference 2017. This workshop is named Monitoring Tools for Boxers and Combat Athletes. I'm going to be showing you some uh, monitoring tools for boxers, coaches. Well, numbers can provide the athlete with real clarity on how their training is improving their physical performance. It can help set goals and help motivate them to, to train a little bit harder. And if they are improving just before competition, this gives them great confidence. Now, a lot of our boxers on the program really buy into the process and really appreciate the feedback that we give them. A great example to use is our two most successful athletes on the program. It's Kel Brook and Kid Galahad. Kel found real confidence in uh, using the gym aware to uh, that fed back the veloc different velocities uh, during his weight training as we monitored his performance as he got closer towards the Glofkin fight. We showed not only was he getting stronger going towards middleweight, but he was taking that speed and that explosiveness that played a big role in his success in the fight. Great quote from Kid Galahad during an interview, as men lie, women lie, but the numbers don't lie. You see a lot of boxers in interviews saying, yeah, I've had a great camp, I'm feeling great, I'm feeling strong. What about knowing that you're strong and knowing that you're faster, knowing that you're fitter? Them numbers provide real solid evidence that your training it's having a huge impact on your physical performance. You're fitter than you are before, and you're, you're faster and stronger going into this next fight. And this can give our athletes some real confidence going into their competition. So why are numbers important to us, the coach, the scientists? Well, first of all, it provides feedback to the boxer and the coach of where they need to focus on within their training and this helps inform practice so it informs the training program that we're going to set the boxers so when a boxer first walk, walks through the door we test them straight away to get the numbers from them to see where they're strong and see where they need to improve so we can either work on these areas for improvement or we can make the strengths into super strength. For example, if a boxer comes in and they're not as fast as they are strong, we need to work on some more speed exercises. So it really gives us a great direction into where our program is. So we're not guessing on where our athlete needs to improve. It also can help set immediate, short, and long-term goals. So giving them a target to try and improve their physical performance. Also at the end of camp, we're able to evaluate the progress and success of the training intervention. Like I said in the previous slide, this gives the boxer real confidence before they go into a competition. And also will give us more information when things haven't gone so well and when 
things need to change. Things might be not just to do with training, but to do with diet, the sleep patterns, you know, the, how they recover between training sessions. So numbers are very important as it gives us more information, more detail and less guesswork. So monitoring, it can seem really, really daunting. These are some of the feedback forms that I've given at Boxing Science to our athletes over the past three or four years. I've spent a lot of time on Excel. I've got pretty good at it. Uh, you know, so if you've ever looked at another Boxing Science article or video around monitoring and the feedback that we give our boxers, it might seem a little bit daunting for you, but don't worry, because monitoring is as easy or as hard as you make it. It can look like this and look really, really fancy, uh, but this takes a lot of time and a lot of experience. Like I said, I've spent a lot of time in Excel trying to get better and better and better because I feel that it's really important for our programme. But what I'm going to give you is some really, really easy, simple processes that you can give to your boxers and combat athletes. So now I'm going to be talking through some monitoring tools that we use in the boxers and for the coaches. So we're going to kick it off for monitoring tools for boxers. We're going to show you how to use uh, Google Forms to help monitor boxing training loads. I'm going to show you the Google Form that we use for daily wellness using the scale that I've just gone through and the self-assessment tool that we've got set up for you in the Train Like a Champion program. So we're going to use the Google Form again. This time it's going to be a little bit easier for us as we only need to take two pieces of data. That's the boxing session duration and the rate of perceived exertion. Now these are just normal text boxes. So if I go into edit, question type, we're going to pick text. And obviously it's going to be required question. Rate of perceived exertion, it's a rate of um, on how hard the session is on a scale of 1 to 10. Again, required question, as we will be able to get our calculation for the load. So, let's see what this actually looks like. So, this is the Google form, the live form. Uh, this can be accessed by your phone, uh, tablet, or laptop. So, we'd look at putting the total session duration in here so I'll do a session that I did earlier it was an hour so 60 minutes so I always put it in as minutes so for example if you end up being an hour and a half you put 90 minutes and then you put in your RPE uh, so today I'd give myself a 9 so put in 9 in there and then press submit So what that does now, it goes up into the cloud and automatically goes into your Google Sheet on Google Drive. Uh, like I said before, this is a totally free service um, that you can set up yourself. Just create yourself, your own Google account and you'll be able to set up all the Google Drive and the Google Forms. And we have put in an example of this in the comment box below. Now let's have a look at the boxing training monitor. So I've put in my session. Here we are. And these are my other sessions today. And this has automatically gone into a chart, which I haven't put a title for. Oh well, we'll do that in a little bit. So these automatically come up. I changed this to um, just putting dates. It puts dates and timing. As you can see, there's a timestamp on there. This comes up automatically, so does the RPE. But the load here is a calculation that isn't automated. This is something that you've got to do yourself. 
Now in the formula box, you can see B3 times C3. Uh, let's go to the top box, B2 times C2. So that is, just to show you, I'll put that in. So we put equals B2 multiplied by C2, so RP. And this is what gives us the load. Now, like I said, this is, doesn't automatically come up. So we've just got to drag that down so we get all the data in there. So if I put in another one, then it just comes here. I just have to drag down this. So some great numbers there. As you can see in my training, I'm managing my training loads quite well. I've got some harder days, uh, some medium days, and I've got a lighter day uh, at the bottom just here. So I've got some quite good training variation. Now it's really good to see this nice visual um, representation of the data. So how do you do this? Well, let me just delete this and I'll show you. So you go insert, chart, you pick, uh, you select the data range on this button here and we want to select dates first, timestamp, add another range, select the load. Okay. And then we're going to put a combo chart. That's what gives us our, our bar chart. Insert. And there we have it. Now you can either do this week by week, or you can just basically uh, insert, um, insert a row in here, and this will separate out the data. So if we chart title, uh, week one, or training load, enter, this is training load, these are clearly the dates, there we have it, it's very own Excel spreadsheet to monitor our training loads. Wellness forms can be given out on laminated sheets or paper and can be put into a Excel spreadsheet. But a really quick and effective way that we've uh, developed at Boxing Science is using a Google form. Here is our wellness monitor on Google Forms. And this can be accessed via um, a link and can be completed on your laptop, tablet, iPhone, smartphone, whatever. Um, it's really, really good, really useful tool and really easy to use as well. Now, the, the wellness report, we, we originally had it on laminated sheets, um, but we wanted to kind of cut out the middleman because obviously writing it on the sheet and then uh, having to type in the data. Also, we wanted the boxers to do this every day because obviously we only see them two, three, four times a week where they might be training five or six days in a week and we want to see how they're doing from a day-to-day -day basis. So having the Google form is something that they can take ownership of and, you know, and we're going to get a lot more data from it. We've got the, the picture, the form, that uh, the boxes are all quite familiar with now. And as we go down, we've got a scale. So basically the boxes will type in. So today, I'm around about two or three to be honest. The sleep quality was a three. Muscle soreness, two. Readiness to train, is two. I'm not feeling too good today. So, as body mass, okay, I'll let you into a secret, 88 kilos. All right, so this is this is what, I, what I'm feeling today. This is my body mass, and this is what uh, the box can fill in. Submit, and there we go.
So that goes up into the cloud. And we're able to have a look if we go on to view responses. So the data automatically comes into this uh, Google spreadsheet. Now it looks a bit empty at the minute, but you know once you keep putting in responses, the the form should uh, fill up. When the form's filled up, it's going to look a bit plain. There's going to be a lot of numbers there. So what we need to do is to add some conditioning format rules. So first of all, we need to put what the actual scale is. So one. And you can rate what's good and what's bad. So if I select all, all the way down, come back up, go to format, conditional formatting, and we can put in a color scale. And we can go from green to red. And we can change what color we want the minimum value, because we want that red. We want good to be green. So five out of five. So then we've got our uh, scale in there. So if we go back to submitting another response, let's say if I'm feeling great all the way through go back to the clouds and there is coming up green having a color scale is really beneficial because it makes the good and the bad numbers really stand out and also not only wellness but it tells you um, different things about what your athlete is either doing really well or not doing so well. So for example, let's go for energy levels. So if energy levels uh, aren't very good uh, and this is having an effect on his wellness, uh, we could look at what, what's affecting that energy, them energy levels. Is it something to do with sleep? If it's not, it's probably something to do with nutrition. On sleep quality, you know, if this is having a, having a big effect on energy levels and readiness to train, and this is being scored pretty low all the time, then we've got to give the athletes uh, some tips on getting to sleep better, you know, not having a look at the, uh, your mobile phone or your tablet just before bed, uh, not looking at your emails, making sure you're nice and relaxed before you go to bed so you're getting really good sleep quality. Muscle soreness, if this is low, you know, we could look at you know, your recovery process. Are you training too hard? Do you have to take down your loads a little bit? Do you have your recovery drink? Do you do stretching and everything like that? Do you do foam rolling? We can really, really see you know, what's affecting his readiness to train and what's affecting our performance. And a really good example of this, and we're going to put a link in the expert notepad for you, is when we uh, was preparing Rizal the Wiki for the national championships in 2015, his results were stagnating because he wasn't managing his sleep, his recovery patterns, his energy levels were low. We looked at some better recovery methods, some better nutrition. And we looked to try and um, make sure that he was typing in his uh, wellness scores on a daily basis. And this help his wellness really improved, his energy levels, his muscle soreness, all improved, and he ended up improving his performance massively. And just coming up short in semi-finals, you know, he was only 18 at the time, so we got a really good result out of that. Uh, I've explained a little bit more about the process of that in in a boxing science article, and the link is in the expert notepad. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to set all this up. So I'm not going to really break it down, but I'm going to show you what you, what you need to do. If we add item, you want your question title. So let's say we're going to do energy levels again. So energy levels.
The question tie is a scale. And you want it, you know, you can do it whatever scale that you want. If it's RPE, we'll go 1 to 10. But to keep it nice and simple, we use 1 to 5. And we'll just label the bottom one and the top one. We don't need to uh, label each individual one. We've got the image right there. And the boxes should know once they become familiar with you using the wellness form, it should come naturally to them. No, I feel 3 out of 5, 4 out of 5. So, what's label 1? Very, very tired. It's buzzing. Very, very tired. Buzzing. So, make that a required question just to make sure you're getting all the data. Then, take a look at where you want to place it. And then, send out your Google form to your athletes. We're here with Muma Mwemba, uh, just come down to Sheffield City Boxing Club to uh, promote your professional debut. That's right. Yeah, so as it all going like at, at Steffi Bulls, uh, having that transition to the professional ranks? Yeah, um, training's good at the minute. It's um, just learning how to how the pros do it com compared to how the amateurs do it. Um, got Steffi and Ray um, teaming up. Uh, teaching me the ranks and uh, I'm enjoying it to be honest quite yeah. a lot. Yeah, you've been getting some good sparring over there. Yeah, um, yeah. good sparring. Um, I'm in a gym full of um, you know champions. Um, got current British champions, previous British champions, um, Commonwealth champions. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm in a gym full of champions and I'm enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's, it's been tough like trying to spar a few more rounds than um, normal. It, it's different. I won't say that it's tough because um, I don't think there is anything that's, you know, yeah. that's tough. It's a challenge, I'd rather say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so is it challenging? Yeah, it is. Um, it is different, um, but it's still more enjoyable than, yeah. than anything. I'm, the, the way that they've, they've got me working is, um, you know, they've, they've taken the time with me yeah. um, so that I can build up to those rounds. So, yeah. yeah. Talking, uh, everyone loves him in the gym and a good lad, he pushes himself hard, especially working. Oh, he's up every time since I've known he's worked a full-time job all the way through and he's been there training at, up, up, up at six o'clock in the morning yeah. training working and coming straight from work to the gym yeah. so he's, I know he puts a graph through but yeah. I suppose he, he, he motivates everyone really because of how, how hard he trains and how much he puts in how, how dedicated he is to it it kind of brings everyone else up um, and obviously yeah, I get some good quality sparring from him yeah. so I've not seen that much of him recently because he's been training at a different gym with him turning pro and everything but yeah, yeah um, it's cool kind of Inspiring how much uh, how much work it puts in our dedicated Yeah. Well, so amateur at Chef City, yeah. um, fifty over fifty bouts. Yeah. How old are you now? Um, twenty nine. Twenty nine. 29 so so yeah. so it's it's took you a bit of time to uh, turn professional. What yeah. what was the making of that decision? Um, a number of things. Um, I think I love the sport. Um, this is, I think, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm built for. It's what I've trained for for, for God knows how many years. Um, not just that. Um, I think uh, I needed to mature um, mentally as well as uh, as well as physically. I think you know mm. I'm, I'm physically mature. Mm. Um, so I think um, I've waited for the right time. Um, yeah, 29 years. People might mm. say that it's slightly older, but for me, it's right. Yeah, definitely. And you, you started at Sheffield City just around about five, uh, wait, five years ago? Five years ago. Five years ago. Five years ago. Um, I, had, um, I think I came here with 25 mm. fights, so I had my, mm. my 50th with, with the club, which meant um, quite a lot to me. I wanted yeah. to say that I've done at least half of my career here, so yeah, yeah. Um, 53 bouts all, all in all. Yeah, so you, you, came, you came at around about 24 years old and obviously yeah. you developed quite... Yeah quite a lot and you've yeah. waited for that right time yeah that's exactly it develop loads um, fantastic yeah. so when, when can we see you um, you can see me on the 25th of November um, at Doncaster Dome yeah. um, pack show um, I think there's t 10 of us uh, in total from 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 Steffi stable so <laughs> yeah can't wait so what, what are your goals as a professional um, same as every professional I think um, we all dream of winning titles yeah um, like I say, it's what I love doing to win a title. Um, doing what I love doing is, you know, that's that, I couldn't ask for anything more of myself. 
Yeah, I think he's going to yeah. do really well. Yeah. I think he's got the style for it. I think he'll suit him. Um, yeah. The pros because he can take his time a bit more, yeah. plan his feet, I think what he's doing a bit more. So I think he'll suit him. Well, he's an amateur. Uh, I think he'll transition into it pretty well. I mean, in our gym, we used to spar six, six rounds, six, seven, five, six rounds all the time. So I mean, for his starting off, doing only doing four, maybe four to six, he's more than ready for that already. Even when he was training with us. I mean, yeah. uh, anyone who's in the gym is. Uh, He's a really strong lad, I think, for, I think he's boxed at 64 or he, boxed at, he used to box at 69 for us and he went down to 64 and he's a really, really strong kid. He's got a beautiful backhand where he like, slips, not to tell you too much, but he <laughs> slips out one way and like as if you're going to slip and then come back with the left up, but you throw right hand instead. Mm. And like that short amount of times he's caught me and ended up putting me that one. Yeah, excellent. So why should people come and see you on 25th November? I'm a boxer, yeah. but I'm a fighter too. Yeah. Um, natural born fighter. Yeah. Um, it's what I love yeah. doing. Yeah, L love doing more than anything. Um, exciting. I don't think I've ever been in a boring fight. To be perfectly honest, yeah. um, I give as good as I get. Yeah, um, and you'll all see that on the 25th of November. Good stuff, Muma. All the best. Thank you.